What's up, everybody? I am here today with my friend. That is not me. No, this is not an inner thoughts monologue. I am Black Eye Senpai, and this is Sir Scoop. So, today we're going to be doing a deck profile on his deck that I just played against for the last, like, good part of an hour. Um, it's very interesting, and, uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, so we have... Can't really pronounce this card's name, but we have one Nyanromon, uh, and then we have four Upamon. Obviously, Upamon is good when you're at three security or less, so you get that extra plus from drawing when you attack. Super good. On to the rookies, we have four of the healing. Solomon. Uh, so essentially, this card, yes, it's a four cost. I know that. But it's also a zero free play cost when you Digivolve. Um, if you're at three or less security, you get to heal one. So there's many plays that you can do with this card. Uh, late game, obviously. Uh, you can swing with it if it doesn't die to security. You can hard play a Chimera Mon to kill it to heal one and then kill something on your opponent's board. So essentially, you can make plays. Um, you be the judgment of that. Um, that's completely up to you. But uh, this card is great at four. I don't see any reason to run less of that. <clears throat> Next, we have the vanilla three-cost Tinkermon. Uh, obviously, you know why that's in here. I need list to say why that's in here. Then we have we have four of the uh, two-cost vanilla Salomon, obviously, to just flood the board and go wide. Then we have, last but not least, for the rookies, we have two of the Patamon promos. Um, I know you guys are probably wondering why I'm playing two instead of zero or one. Uh, I like this card, personally, because sometimes you're not going to be able to see... Um, you're not going to see Salomon, and it's another source or another way to heal. So most case or some cases um, in a scenario, like if you're down to like zero security and they have like an Omnimon on board or something like that, and he still has his level six and you have like one security card left or something like that, just a scenario, uh, Mastamon can bring this back to the board and heal or you could just hard play it from your hand, essentially ending your turn, depending on your memory. Um, but you want to make smart plays with this. So essentially, if they like Gaia forced your last Digimon or something, you could hard play this, then play Chimera Mon, kill it, because you just healed, and then kill something on their board if they have a, a, a level 5 or lower. So yeah, it's all about making those crucial plays. Don't... Uh, just throw it out there, more so like a late game kind of card. That's why it's at two. And take note, guys, usually tech cards you want to play at least two of because you want to be able to see it. So that's it for the rookies. Uh, moving on to the champions, we have four. I uh, can't really pronounce this guy's name either, but we have four of the one cost uh champion you know just to give you that extra turbo to go into mastermind or uh, um contorso mine so and it's also a 6k beat stick uh i wouldn't recommend swinging with this too much but if you need to like get the opponent down to say like two security and you don't really have an ultimate in hand it's okay um you actually have peter mon to restore something that you lost usually like I said, if you swing into security and this dies, Peter Mine is always great to, you know, cover up for what you lost. So, which brings me to my next point, three Peter Mine. Peter Mine, fantastic. On play from Master Mind's effect or just from your hand, get this back from the uh, discard pile of the trash. Really good combo. Helps you go wide and gets you more aggressive and makes your opponent Think about the plays for next turn because they have to deal with this. If they don't, that's two security they could possibly be losing if they don't have a blocker. If they don't, I mean, if they do have a blocker, then okay, that's fine. 
but your board is still wide. So you're still setting up to make plays and stuff. So, yeah, I, w I was running like four uh, Peter Bond at one point, but it felt like it was just too much. I'm like, I'm seeing this card way too much. So three is the perfect number. Then we run three blockers. Um, obviously, five costs. Most people say that's bad, but if you have TK on the board, it's not that bad because you're still memory drying your opponent at two. So, or you could just digivolve and put them at one if you're at one uh, memory. So, you know, and it's doing its job block. You can also do another combo such as, you know, set up for your discard pile. You can either digivolve on top of a Tinkermon or you could digivolve on top of a Salomon if you really wanted to. And uh, you can just block, and that's one way to get those two cards into the discard pile in order to set up for your uh, combo with Mastermind. <clears throat> uh, next, we have, last but not least for the champions, two Wizard Mind. Um, before, I was running uh, Dark Despair, the two cost card, because Mimi makes that card free for little to no cost. Literally, little to no cost. Uh, but yeah, this puts pressure on the board because it's just sitting there. <clears throat> Excuse me. If Omnimon is rested, or any Digimon that's like stronger than this card that's rested, or if a blocker is on the field, and you have a yellow Digimon with this card, preferably a rookie or something that's mega level, you that is a free swing, either at security or something that's going to block it, or something that's a mega level. It challenges, it puts pressure on the board. Not only that, it's another body that's on the board that helps you go wide. So, you know, not only that, you can also do a play where, okay, if they decide not to block and this doesn't die, cool. Chimera mine, kill it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Draw a card because of its skill, and then you kill something on their board. You get pluses. This deck is all about plussing the security, your hand, and your board. So, you know, control. <coughs> Sorry, guys, for the coughing. Uh, moving on to the ultimates. We played two Angel Wuma. I was playing three, but Rookie Rush beat the shit out of me and made me realize that Shikaku Mon is good. But I played two of this because um, this is a free con or a free way to, uh, I mean, a free pro to go into a uh, master mine so you don't have to worry about them slapping your security, especially red. Red does a great job of doing that. <laughs> so I wonder where you got that impression. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and you also have to know the matchup and what the game state is looking like. I wouldn't just throw this out here, you know, as an ultimate just immediately. You have to take, excuse me, into a, uh, Consideration the board state because a lot of times your opponent could be wide or they could be going tall. Which brings me to my next point of having two Shikaku mine because, you know, wide versus tall is good. That way you have an aspect of, of controlling both. Uh, I know Shikaku mine says anything that doesn't have a, a digi source under it or a inheritable skill under it or anything that's like under the card. Um, I know that, but it's still, you know, solid. It's good for Rookie Rush. Rookie Rush is annoying and it helps stop it in its tracks. Whereas Angel Mon is good for stopping stuff that's tall, like Omnimon that has plus two security attack and can swing twice. So it kind of stalls for you to get to that Contorsal Mine or get to that um, Master Mine. Master not only that, the inheritable skill is great. Once again, you're going wide. The job of this deck is to rush going wide while keeping control. So, uh, next we have two Chimera Mine. Uh, I've been talking about this for like five minutes, if it's been that long. Uh, one of the greatest purple cards ever. Like, the only thing I would change about it is its cost. I wish I could change the cost to like five. That would be great. But, you know, like all things, it's not perfect. 
but it does help put on aggression. It's another body you can put on the board to destroy stuff. Like I was telling you about the combos with the Patamon, the Tinkermon, the Solomon. You have three targets and also a special combo, you know, that I'll get to later on in this video. Um, can really make an aggressive move on your opponent's side of the board. But mostly, like I said, your job, your strategy is to deal with your security and take away your opponent's security. They lose stuff, you gain stuff. That's the idea of this deck. And it's been working out pretty good. It's not perfect, but you know what is. So, so yeah, Chimera Mine is really good. I love it. Such a good card. Uh, then we have two vanillas, the six costs, or the five costs, sorry, 6,000 DP, and the seven costs, 8,000 DP. Um, my reasoning behind this is because um, this kind of gives you some type of aggression if you don't see a mega. But most of the time, when you're uh, digivolving tall, you want to just wait. You don't really want to rush with these. I mean, it's your personal preference. Um, this is more so I could be aggressive a little more. I thought about cutting out one of these for an extra one of these just because, you know, you don't always see a mecha and you have to stop. But the reason why I run, <coughs> excuse me, two of the five costs is because, you know, with TK, you're at three. And if you can't really do anything or if you don't have a champion or a rookie or, um, uh, you know, you can't just go tall. You can always start to go wide with this. Yeah, in uh, most cases, um, most people don't like, you know, hard dropping without getting a plus or some sort. But, you know, you have to do what you got to do. Because, like I said, the game state is important. It's good. Solid. <coughs> now we're getting to the heart of the deck. The heart and soul of the deck. Uh, we are playing four. In torso mine. Uh, a lot of people don't give this card enough credit. This card is still good after 1.5. I actually got a lot better after 1.5. Um, so going back to the Chimera mine. So essentially what you want to do is you want to go tall with this. Um, if you want to go wide, that depends on the memory state of the board for you to be able to do that. Um, I don't recommend going wide with this, but if you have to, I mean, if you find some strategy or if you have like enough memory to do that, that's great, cool. Um, the strategy behind this card is if it doesn't die when it swings, fantastic, great. Your opponent is still at minus three security, but wait, you're dealing with the Omnimon or something. Uh, Omnimon is obviously going to kill this, <clears throat> but they have two Digimon on the field that are not mega level. This is where this comes in. After you swing, it doesn't die. You can play this, get rid of this, and kill two Digimon that aren't mega level on the board. It's such a good combo. It saved me from losing a couple of times to uh, Omni Red. Um, even Shine Greymon, when I had to play against that, it saved me from that as well. Because Shine Greymon, sure, yeah, you can board wipe me. That's great and all. But guess what, though, sir? If I somehow manage to have, uh, excuse me, a champion out on the field and I just go straight up and go into this, wait until next turn, because they're not going to have an instant way to get another Shine Greymon out to kill what you have. And Shine Greymon can attack because of Contorso Mind's effect after you Digivolve. So essentially, you can swing, you know, Chimera Mind, kill the Shine Greymon. Because he's 11,000 DP on your turn. Just remember that. On your turn, Shine Greymon is 11 DP. Or 11,000 DP, sorry. And you can kill two Digimon with this combo. A lot of people have not seen that. Um, it's a good strategy. I like it. And it's fantastic. All right. So moving on, we have two Match Day Mon. I love the shit out of this card. And you're probably wondering if I love the shit out of this card, why I'm only running two. I use it as a late game card. The strategy is to go in the Kentorsal Mob first. You know, 
start swinging, keeping control of your opponent's board. They can't swing at your security with Contorso Mine on the field. So I like leading off with this, and it's a three cost. I don't really like going into the four cost right off the bat. I mean, you can, but the only way I would go into this first is if I Digivolve off of Angela Mine. Because Angela Mine, when you Digivolve off of her, makes any Digimon on your opponent's side of the field minus two security checks. So you Digivolve for free. And if they want to destroy this with a Gaia Force or a Trump Sword, that's fine. That's more memory that you're getting on your side of the field to rebuild. And not only that, you just took a security check from them. And you didn't even have to check it. You just trashed it. So that gets around. Gaia Force, Trump Sword, uh, Cock Breath. Um, Beside his breath. I don't want them to think you out here just doing stuff for, uh, for Digimon. Um, Cositis Breath. Uh, yeah, you know, it gets around option cards. It's really good. Or it gets around that bullshit ass Omnimon that you could have swung it sounds into. Like, it sounds like you got a lot of hate in your heart for Omnimon. <laughs> I wonder who instilled this into you. You know, you know guys. The cameraman is filming right now, you know. He's an Omnimon lover. Yeah, Omnimon's the best Digimon. We, we we can't have that around here. You know, at one point I thought I was an Omnimon lover, but... Oh, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <clears throat> so, yeah, Massimon, Heart and Soul, late game card. That's what I use it as. Most people prefer to use it early. That's fine, but I prefer to use it late game because it's, it's good. And if your opponent has one security left, that's like a plus two security attack on your turn if you're able to get this off. It wins games if they don't have a blocker. Really fantastic card. I love it. Uh, moving on to the options and tamers. We play three Mimi. Uh, I cannot express how broken this card is for purple. Or any option card you choose to play with this card. It works on your opponent's turn. It works on your turn. This card is nuts. It's a two cost that allows you to gain memory whenever an option card is activated. On your, if it's being played. It does not activate, I repeat. This does not activate if the option card activates in security. Because it's not on play. They believe, yeah, I believe, yeah, the option card has to be played. Yeah, so when the option card is used, you may suspend this tamer to uh, gain a memory. So it doesn't really work on security, I don't believe. No, it doesn't. So essentially, like I said, this card is really good. It works against uh, Gaia Force. If they destroy something, cool. I get a memory. I get an extra memory. You take away eight or... Guy forces at eight cost, so that's nine, depending on the memory that they have left over. Um, you got two that turns into ten, and it can't go no more than that. Uh, it also stops blue from gaining memory with um, what's that called? Hammer Spark. Yeah. So that can counter Hammer Spark if they're trying to extend their plays. Say, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> You're not extending shit. <laughs> Um, cock breath if they want to you know oh God. <laughs> if they want to return your mask they mind okay fine turn that to the side tap her ass and, uh, oh God. and I really mean do tap that ass oh no. and get that memory for free alright tap the Mimi cheeks <laughs> Mimi tap alright tap those cheeks really underrated card and I love it it's great Moving on, we have three TK. I don't really have to explain this card. It's good, it's great. Um, it works with getting Mimi into the security in order to be hit so it can be played for free. Um, <clears throat> it can also put your master mods in security. You don't really wanna see those in security, but if you hit it, fine. If they run into a 12,000, cool, that's okay. Um, it can also put your uh, your Sal mods in there. No, your sound mods. Your uh, Peter mods. Your pal, your pattern mods. Pals. And then you have uh, your tinker mods. 
and also in your style mod. So you have stuff that can go into security and go to the discard pile early in the game if you wanted to. Uh, the only thing that I hate about this card is that you can't get purple cards with it. That's oh. the only thing. Well, I hate it because it's expensive. <clears throat> and, you know, scalpers, I'm just going to say this. Fuck you guys because you guys made this card expensive. I mean that and it's a good card. Yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. Um, so, yeah. Really good card. Like, probably the best Tamer card in the game. Super good. Last but not least, we run three Trump Swords. It's, it's good. Mm, that doesn't sound too convincing. Only thing is, when you have to deal with something that's rested, that is the kicker right there. You can't destroy something that's rested. But, if you remember back early in the deck profile, we have the Mimis. I'll get into those in a second, but that's not what I'm talking about right now. We're talking about this card. Wizardmon has pressure. People don't give this card enough credit. It's good. In yellow, it is good. It makes Omnimon sit there and think about his life decisions. Omnimon has to stay rested. If you have another yellow Digimon, you can clap his cheeks for free. And I don't mean like a hooker on the corner. Oh no. He's Wizardmon. He can make his wing huge and say, take this wizard dickin' Omni. That's right. And if you don't see this, because this puts fear in Omnimon. If they don't attack, Trump Sword comes in and still can destroy Omnimon. It's like a purple Gaia Force, in a sense. And then with Mimi, it just makes it even more broken. It makes it a four-cost card, or a five-cost card, or a six-cost card. Dep and also, depending on the memory that you have on your turn. So it could be free. It could be played for free if you wanted to, depending on the memory you have. So, yeah. But to wrap this up in conclusion, guys, uh, this deck, is, like I said, it's not perfect. I love it. It's good. But it's not perfect. You have to really strategize your plays when playing this deck. And if you know what you're doing and you're experienced uh, from playing the game, you will enjoy the deck. It, all, it really started out as a fun deck when I built it initially, but then like as I started seeing like the amount of plays that you can do with the deck, it's turned out to be really good. It's even competing with the top tier meta decks. Um, like I said, it's not perfect. Still some kinks that need to be worked out. Um, you can change it. Uh, I just wanted to introduce this list to you guys because there are other types of yellow deck lists that you can play other than Shine Gray Mine. So, you know, don't be a tear whore. You can if you want to. I'm not judging you. I'm just talking shit. But uh, that'll be it for the deck profile, guys. Uh, thank you, Black Guy Senpai, for having me. This is a uh, Sir Scoop with the beautiful Black War Greymon Mac. You know, I love Black War Greymon. He's my favorite Digimon because um, <clears throat> he's just solid. He's he's like the the hero we don't deserve. Okay. He did. He, he, like he, Batman. he he died for no reason in the anime. He no. didn't deserve to die. No, he deserved to die. We he you didn't have bitch ass war Greymon die, whoa. but you had the black man die. How you have the? Whoa, whoa, I'm whoa, tired. Whoa. I'm tired of this. You, you guys <laughs> let the black man die first all the time. That's not fair. Mm -mm. But I'm talking shit once again. <laughs> this is Sir School. Black guy senpai. Thank you for the deck list, and I will catch you guys in another deck profile. Peace.